Hello, I am Lux. And I am Ember. And this is our thoughts on the theater, the theater. Whatever happened to the theater? Okay, seriously, name that movie in the comments. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 7, Horseplay. I know the movie, but I won't reveal it. Put your answer in the comments. Other than the cringe Trist that was most of this, I actually enjoyed the beginning and ending. Yes, yes, it was all that cringing in the middle. I, I think I have cringe lines. I was cringing so badly, we didn't get to the point of pausing, but I did bury my head in my hands. I was just like, if we pause it, it's only going to take longer. Just rip it off like a band-aid. <laughs> oh, Twilight, Twilight, Twilight. Also, how bad at acting Celestia was bugged me. She's a bloody politician. It's what they all do. <laughs> and she's been doing it for over a thousand years. She has lots of practice. I mean, even going back to the episode where Celestia and Luna trade job duties. It's exemplified right there. I'm trying to figure out, especially during the acting lessons, like, Celestia's not that stupid. No, no, so it was basically someone set off a plot device. <laughs> oh god, I love the way you did that. Someone set off a plot device. Chink! <laughs> Everyone's stupid now. What'd you just do? Plot device. Okay, does that count as fanficking or god modding? No, 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 it's a plot device. <sighs> uh, sir, there's a plot device ahead. Dang it, we can't avoid those. Because the entire thing could have been avoided by Twilight simply asking Celestia what would she like to do to be a part of the play. Because she is the ruler of Equestria. Who says she's going to have time to learn lines and rehearse and get the dance routines down? And why does no one listen to AJ? She had the right idea from the start. Because she's Applejack. She's like the core of the group. This is one of the reasons that episodes with her are usually kind of hard to do. Because she's good at straightening up other people and being the rock in the episode. If she has nothing to work with but herself, it doesn't really work. Not well, and I'm sorry if... All of you can tell that she's a bad actress. Why does Twilight have to be the one to tell her? You were complicit in the entire thing because none of you had the nerve to go up to Celestia and go, you know, this really isn't working. Also, Twilight's a bad director. When you have someone like Celestia, it's best to give them simple, clear, and exact instructions. Not just faster, slower, Stronger, louder, only good actors hear those and goes, oh, I know what to do. A little bit more, a little bit less. A more experienced actor can extrapolate a lot from a small amount of information based on their past experience. But when you have someone who is more of a novice, just like when you're learning anything, you need to be given more information and detailed information. Not the directing equivalent of an Ikea package. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many people out there have done this, but ever remember those school assignments where they tell you, describe how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Oh my god, that and the mission project were the bane of my fourth grade existence. Actually, it might have been sixth grade for peanut butter. When you direct a new actor or someone who hasn't had a lot of experience, you have to be almost that exact without being too exact because you don't want to tell them exactly what to do. You still want their imagination to give you something, but you have to be more exact than faster, slower, louder. You can't just say, make a peanut butter sandwich. You have to go get the bread, open the package, grab two slices, lay them flat. And then you leave something to interpretation. Like, which side to put the peanut butter and jelly on? Put them both on the same side? No. Yes, leave that up to the person, because that gives them a little bit of creativity when they're acting. And you'll still end up with the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, as long as both peanut butter and jelly are involved. Also, going back to the moment of the directing, oof, that was awesome. First time we actually hear Celestia use the royal Canterlot voice. That was awesome. Also, no one should ever be the writer director, 
and concept artist. You're too involved. You're too close to the project. Well, there are those projects out there where it's all done by a single person that comes out fantastic. I'd like to point out a couple of video games recently, like Stardew Valley. Wow. <laughs> then in the general scheme of things, you at least need an editor. Or you need honest friends who will go, dude, this is cool and everything, but this part right here really kills it for me. Also, another thing about this episode that was really nice is it almost completely canonizes the Two Sisters Journal. Because what was described at the beginning of this play is exactly what happens in the Two Sisters Journal and why Celestia and Luna raise the sun and moon. Because... It was taking the power of all the unicorns, and the unicorns were getting drained and no longer able to do it. And they ran out of magic, and then Celestia and Luna stepped in and were able to do it without losing all their magic because, hey, they're alicorns. I'm just glad that got in there. I'm like, ooh, I've been hoping that they canonized the Two Sisters journal because, fun fact about that, the writer of that actually talked with Faust. So what did you have in mind for the backstory of the two sisters? So while they may have taken their own interpretation, they did get some feedback of what the original intent was. So, shall we list the ways that you really wanted to nitpick this episode? <laughs> so, so many. Because how did she manage to convince the students to do this? Because she had all the non-pony students who wouldn't necessarily even know the story. Also, there are more students than that. So why were there only students playing the six acting roles? Why wasn't anyone helping with set design or doing special effects? Why was that only the grown-ups? Another thing is, it sounded like they already had most of the people cast. So that means the lead was already cast? So... Who was that? Because it almost sounds like it was Fluttershy because Fluttershy was the only one that we didn't see in practice. And she talked about going on stage. She was the narrator originally, but I have a feeling she memorized the entire play. There are some actors who will do that. Well, it's just easier that way. Because you have to be able to follow the stage cues like the, where was I? Where you give a person their previous line when they've lost their place. And that's a lot easier to do if you know the whole script. I should know. I've been prompted like that a couple of times myself. Remember, my brain Swiss cheese. I did a really good job at memory as lines, but there were times on stage where I would walk out and my brain would just go, Hey, you know those lines you practice? Yeah? I don't have them. We're on stage! Yeah, you see, I kind of lost them. <laughs> and the other actors are like, So, Jim, uh... The uh isn't there, by the way. They were very good at giving me time to go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Improvisation. Wonderful thing. Because you have to remember, unless you have repeat customers, the audience doesn't know the lines. You're free to mess things up as long as you don't show that you've messed things up. Because if you make it look like it's all part of the show, it's all part of the show. Because, you know, that's one of the tropes of, oh yeah, I've seen this before. Everyone will think this was all just part of the show. And Gravity Falls being amazing at turning tropes on their side. Nobody thought it was part of the show and they were all just horribly insulted. Especially the guy who kisses puppets. <laughs> yeah, that guy spends a little bit too much time with himself. So she really kind of dodged a bullet on that one. Yeah, and I remember another part I liked. Good news, free food. <laughs> Way to look on the right side. Yep, I love how he said it so like, good news, free food. <laughs> Apparently he was hungry. I love how basically Celeste took over her normal duties, managing everything. Because <laughs> that's what I figured they'd have her do, like do effects or set changes, you know, something in the background. Yeah, she's a manager. A big manager, because she manages an entire country. So, play to your strengths. And her strength is, she really knows how to do... Logistics really well. She's been ruling a country for over a thousand years. Woo! She's figured out how to get all the little people to do her work for her. I mean, look at Twilight. Though that that was one of my favorite lines of how Starlight was like, Can you imagine getting sweaty at warm-ups with the princess? Blowing your nose around talking to a princess? 
you talk to me all the time. You're not a princess, <laughs> princess. Like, ow, stab. Thanks. So, yeah. Even your friends consider a difference between the uh, two sisters princesses and all the other princesses. I have a feeling they probably still, at least her friends, still probably consider Cadence a real princess because she was a princess before they knew her. But remember, Starlight met Twilight when she was a princess. But Starlight probably also found out later that she wasn't always that way, so she has that thing in her head compared to what she probably knows about Cadence. Because not a lot of people seem to know that Cadence was a Pegasus before she became a princess. Though it look, still looks like she did pretty young because, yeah, she was a alicorn when Prince, when Princess Twilight Sparkle, <laughs> when Twilight Sparkle was still Twilight Sparkle. Just a young foal. And so, wow, Celestia started young on that one. Apparently, or Cadence did something really amazing. And Celestia went, you want to be a princess? Because I could use the help. I have an idea. How about you be the princess of love? I am getting really tired of dealing with divorces. Because I already have to raise and lower the moon every day. And the moon, and the sun, and the... Wait, see how confused I am? I am exhausted. I haven't slept in years. Because that's one thing they don't talk about. Because the Celestia stays up all day and stays up very late. And then Luna is up all night. So how did one Alicorn princess manage all of that? With lots and lots of coffee. And Red Bull. And caffeine plants and <laughs> what's that in your hoof of celestia an iv of caffeine <laughs> what's an iv i traveled to the future and came back with this i am going to need it you did what now star world taught me it moving on <laughs> <laughs> and back to the actual episode i have a feeling our audience is enjoying this so what else should we go over about this wonderful train wreck of a episode <laughs> well the episode itself wasn't really a train wreck it was just cringy but I thought I'd use Trainer because it was appropriate to the play. And once again, where were the other students? Not just in the play, but how about in the audience? I didn't see a lot of student-aged ponies. And usually when kids put on a school play, parents and guardians show up. So where were the parents and guardians of the non-pony students? Also, where were the other students? This would probably be done on a school night and probably done right after the school day ends so the other students can stay late, watch the play with the parents also being there so the parents would know that this is a play, school play. Everyone comes, they sit, they watch, the parents probably get a discount on coming free, then they also invite the public because that's how the school plays that I was part of. That's how they work. Pretty much so. Just the overall logistics aren't really making sense. Though I love how both of us went, who when Luna came into the audience. Because I was like, oh, 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 yeah, it, yeah, the younger sister fodder. Hecklers, what do we do? Improvise. <laughs> <laughs> ah, then turn around and got them laughing and going, oh, yeah, this does make sense. They've been at this a while, so of course they look terrible. Also, I love the callback to the episode about the play in Manhattan. With those two actors from the acting troupe. Also, part of me just went, you know, with all the stuff that was going on in this episode and how well Celestia acted at the end, could this have all just been Celestia trolling everyone? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Twilight is supposed to be past the testing stage, so... Yeah, but... Hmm. You know, th those immortals, they get bored after a while. Just a little... I wouldn't know. I is evidence that he's actually been around for several thousand years. What? This is the real reason it's brain Swiss cheese. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what were we doing again? Uh, we were doing a play about how the two sisters journal is canon. Ah, yeah, yeah. Basically everything around certain spots of this episode, mostly the middle. The middle is what really made us cringe. Beginning and end were quite enjoyable, especially like Celestia working in the play, directing everyone. I thought it was the sun, but I think it was just a big glowing yellow ball that Celestia was generating. Because for a second there, I thought she may have accidentally brought, not accidentally, may have actually uh, caused the sunrise. sunrise. And I'm like, well, how late did the play start? Because I know Spike stalled for time. But I think she actually just created a giant yellow glowing orb. Because I said very early on, 
She has like all the magic in Equestria, stage effects. I also was like expecting her to have like some better acting. Like I said, you know, maybe she wasn't in the right mindset of how to apply her already natural inherent acting skills to actually acting. Because sometimes you just get it wrong in your head. But I think a lot of the cringiness came more from Twilight's reactions and directing of things for me than it did from Celestia's actions. Because Celestia was entirely well-meaning and she was trying. Twilight couldn't bring herself to tell Celestia, you know what, this really isn't your strong suit. Maybe we can find something else for you to do in the play. Though, another thing that I was like, amazed about is the fact that I nailed when Rainbow Dash came in. I was like, three, two, one. <laughs> Rainbow Dash comes back in. Hey, everyone. I did an awesome job advertising this show. Why aren't any of you happy? Well, basically, as soon as Rainbow Dash left, I'm like, oh, this is all gone to Tartarus. I'm surprised that no one realized that Rainbow Dash was still gone. I think they were all just too wrapped up in the fact of like, so... Celestia is bad and you want a minute Twilight, what are we going to do? <laughs> you would think Twilight would have learned to listen to Applejack by now. Because Celestia even points this out and goes, didn't Applejack remind you? Yes. Also, I just remembered a great line from Pinkie Pie. What could be dangerous about these magical fireworks that I bought in a dark alley from Trixie? In a dark alley, at midnight, from Trixie. <laughs> and I love how the last one that went off was like, doo -doo -doo -doo, Trixie. <laughs> So, should we wrap this turkey up? If anyone's wondering, yes, he's still doing the henshin pose. It wasn't a henshin pose this time because I had my leg up. I was like, yeah. That could also be a henshin pose. No, no, that would be more like this. And that would be more like the Genyu Force from Dragon Ball. Uh, I still need to watch Super. Dang it. Any final thoughts? This just had potential because you had... Fulfilling dreams and honesty and dealing with directorial problems. And instead we get Twilight having a hyperventilating meltdown. And let's just called it at the wrong time of when Celestia was standing by the curtain. I, I thought it was happening earlier in the episode because there was this big obvious curtain in the background when they were having a certain discussion. And Twilight was just hammering it home how bad Celestia was. I'm like, right there. I guess it's like with Granny's Gone Wild where we're like, just move this plot point up because then we would have had more time for Celestia to actually be upset instead of Twilight immediately goes after her and like five minutes later, Celestia forgives her. You know what would have been better as well is if Celestia was actually a pretty good actress, but Twilight wasn't actually being that good of a director and Celestia started taking over by instinct, started going, no, no, how about this? And Twilight gets angry at it. That would have been really good too because this was Twilight's pet project and to have someone else come in and take over. And do a better job than you. Much better. And it would have even played to Celestia's strengths. And it could have been about Twilight getting her feelings hurt by this and not telling Celestia that her feelings were being hurt because Celestia was taking over. And having trouble saying it because she realized that Celestia was doing a better job. So she was feeling rather worthless. It's just so interesting. You keep saying we want more Celestia episodes and Celestia interaction. Here we get some and we're like, eh. It's because we want more of the good kind of Celestia interaction. This was nice that we had another episode with her in it. One where she didn't have to be focused on her royal job duties. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. Season 8, Episode 7, Horse Play. So, um, hi. So, th th this is the outro, and, um, so we don't have any credits, but, um, if, if you like the video, you you can click the like button, or, or, or s s subscribe, or, or <laughs> leave a comment. Comment below uh, uh, if you like Lux's art. You, you can find more of it online. Uh, there, there are links down below. And um, you're still looking at me, aren't you?
so, um, yeah, the watching and like and subscribe does a lot to help support the channel. So we also take uh, donations and commissions. So there's the commission link and um, the, the uh, Patreon, Patreon link and coffee. Patreon starts at uh, $1 and coffee works in increments of three. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogue, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.